Hello! I am in Buxton. This is the Peak District. I'm just going to read because it's cold. So this video is about how I'm treating coronavirus like my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking as a result of reading the video title, but I know if it was me, I'd be thinking... What did you do to make your boyfriend come at you with a baseball bat? Um... I didn't do anything. I mean, it was very unprovoked and out of character and just so random. But anyway, it's a good analogy for how I'm dealing with the coronavirus. Let me just read, yeah? I was walking, he was driving, he saw me and he stopped and he just had a lot of manners. He was like, can I speak to you? He got out of the car to speak to me. He was very polite. He just had good manners and I really appreciated that. So he asked me if he could have my number. I gave it to him. I think he called me that night. Like he, he just, he was, you know, he had, he had manners, he had game. The kind of game that I think when other guys stop me, it's like, why don't you just be polite? It would work. <laughs> anyway, he said to me something like, if you need anything, call me. A couple of weeks later, I was at a party in central London and I thought, let me just phone him and see if he'll give me a lift home. And he did. He came and picked me up, took me home, didn't try to come in. And I thought, again, he's got manners, respect. I like that. And everything was good. He'd called me and said that he was making dinner. So he was like, should I come and pick you up? And do you want to come and have dinner with me? And I was like, oh yeah, cool. I went over and I had packed an overnight bag because I was going to go to work from his house the next morning. And he picked me up. We had dinner that he had cooked. We chilled for a bit. He was into music as all my exes are and he started working on whatever project he had going on at the time. I watched him for a little while as I was interested and I wanted to learn what I could. But then I got tired so I got myself ready for bed thinking that he'd be up soon. Of course. After a long while, I went down to show him what I was wearing. Yeah. <laughs> I pranced down a little bit and went back up to his room. Time passed and a lot more time passed and he still didn't come up. Since I had to be at work in the morning, I gave him up until a certain time in my head. And I was like, if he doesn't come up by then, I'm going to sleep. Bearing in mind, it was already really late by then, probably around 3 a.m. And I had been there for more than three hours on my own. Can you imagine? You go around to someone's house and you're on your own for three hours. Like, why are you there? He came up 10 minutes after my deadline. I was awake when he walked into the room, but I didn't move. The light was off, it was dark. We exchanged a word or two as I wanted to know if it was okay with him. He didn't provide any explanation, so I went to sleep. And when I sleep, <laughs> when I sleep, I sleep. And I think he might have tried to wake me up in the night, but my sleep does not play. It does not play. <laughs> so, uh, I get the feeling that, yeah, he tried to get things moving while I was conked out. But I can't be sure, but he did comment about how deep I sleep, so I'm guessing he did try to do something to wake me up. Anyway, the atmosphere was tense in the morning. He didn't say much, nor did I. I had a bath and got myself ready for work. I went to say goodbye to him, probably gave him a kiss knowing me. Then I went downstairs to the front door. I had timed it that I would have enough time to get the train that goes to work. I turned the lock and pulled again. It was locked. I called up to him and asked him how to open the door. I heard him get up and come towards the top of the stairs. As I look up, I see him coming down the stairs. With a baseball bat. With a baseball bat. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> at this point, at least 20 questions are running through my mind, starting with the obvious. Why do you have a baseball bat? To the innocent, is there some trick you have to perform with the bat to get the door open? To a little more worrisome, did you lock the door on purpose so I couldn't get out? And after scanning my thoughts and deciding against all of the questions, I ended up saying, can you open the door please? I didn't ask him any of those questions that were running through my mind. I was just focused on the task at hand. Can you open the door, please? By now, he was at the bottom of the stairs next to me and poked me in the face with the baseball bat.
and poked me in the face with the baseball bat. So yes, he had locked the door on purpose. Question answered. No, it's not likely that the bat would be helpful in opening the door. Another question answered. Still didn't know why he had the bat, but at that point, I didn't want to know. I didn't feel like that conversation was going to be fruitful. So I said again, can you open the door, please? If I left in the next five minutes, I could still get the train I had been planning to get. He stayed silent with the bat in my face. I moved it and stayed just as silent, looking at him or at my watch. After a couple of minutes, he opened the door. I left. I got my train. Well, me hearing him get up was like a couple of weeks of murmuring in the press before we all knew what the talk was about. I kept hearing the word corona, but it wasn't anything that was in my reality and I don't watch the news, but I kept hearing it. And so I was getting the murmur, the rumbling, the sound of this thing coming. Him coming to the stairs with the bat, that was the country going into lockdown. At that point, I should have been heading for cover, protecting myself from imminent danger. His character before now is what I know about flu and viruses. <laughs> They've never been anything to worry about, so why should they now? Like, as far as I know about his character, he's a good guy, so why do I need to worry about him coming at me with a baseball bat? As far as I know, it's unlikely that he's going to use it. It doesn't really make sense, it doesn't add up, so there's no reason why I should be getting fearful. Me choosing not to ask him any questions about his next plan is like my choice to block out the news and not go searching for answers. Staying focused on the train time is me thinking beyond the danger. I am the danger. I'm working out what I need to do to be ready for how things are going to move forward after this situation has resolved itself. I just stayed focused on the next move. My God, it's windy now. The bat is the news that thousands and thousands of people have died. But really, it's him asking me to be scared, just like the news, the news is asking us to be scared. He still hasn't done anything truly scary except locking the door, and that only becomes a problem if he doesn't open it. I never allowed his show to become my reality. I didn't alter my behavior. I didn't try to understand. I wasn't interested in anything that wasn't getting my train. It's very hard to escalate a situation on your own. You have to be a real bad man to turn something into an event without any provocation. I know I didn't do anything to deserve it, and I knew it wasn't my business to deal with. So as far as I was concerned, the only option he had really was to open the door. It's just like with Corona. This isn't my business. It's not my fight. I don't know where it came from. Flus are not scary. I'm just going to focus on getting my train, i.e. what I'm going to do when this shit is all over. So yeah, that's how I'm treating Corona like my ex. I'm back in London and it's just started to rain. So I'll make this quick. But while I was editing the video, I realized that I was smiling a lot and actually it wasn't funny, but that's what I do. I make light out of very serious situations. The reason I didn't leave his house that night when I realized, you know, he was in a weird mood was because the curious part of me just wanted to see how things were gonna play out. I wanted to know where he thought it was going to go and how he thought it was going to be resolved and without provoking the situation or escalating the situation i wanted to see how he dealt with it i don't have a reason to back away i have no problem confronting situations I won't start it, I won't escalate it, I won't provoke it, but I won't walk away. So whatever is in your plan, I want to see it. I want to see where it goes. I accept my light and my darkness and that allows me to stand firm.
that allows me to stay. I'm interested in seeing what you thought you were going to do. With this guy, he decided to open the door. We never spoke of it again. If he didn't open the door, who knows what would have happened. But at no point would I have or need I have been scared.